Sega. Hello everybody, Darren here from the community team and I'm pleased to introduce to you a brand new quest battle let's play from Belagar Ironhammer of Clan Angrund. He's one of the new legendary lords in the King of the Warlord DLC which comes out on October 20th and we're going to be playing through one of his quest battles, the Shield of Defiance. Yes my king, today is a great day! Today we kill Urx! Today is vengeance! Even now, a throng from Karakazul approaches the green filth from the rear. We are honored to drain the orcs from the front. Let them face our might. Let them see what Dawi of the Angron clan are made of. Right, so let's take a look at some of the new units that we have at our disposal. So we've got three units of Bolt Thrower. Now this is a good anti-large arm armor-piercing high range artillery unit very effective at range obviously fires just single bolts at large targets does really good damage then we've got the rangers here at the front and these are kind of low tier missile infantry not the best they look super cool because they're obviously laden with gold rimmed cloth and blue and red and we are playing as clan angrand remember so the colors are going to be a little bit different to how the normal dwarves would be but we're under balagar so we have to play as clan angrand We've also got the Dwarven Rangers that with great weapons at the back here. Now I've got two of these on each side and these guys have big brooding heavy axes. They're good in close quarters combat and they can actually throw axes really far as well as a precursor to, to their normal engagement. Now over on the other side of this cavern, we've actually got our ally coming in. Karak Azul are backing us up in this battle. We've caught the Greenskins on their way through the, uh, the underway towards us and they're approaching from either side. We've got them hemmed in. Now, they're going to be coming up from the rear of the attack, while the Greenskins, will, uh, we're going to take the brunt of the force. So it's all about holding the line as best as we can until our ally can catch up, gain that ground, and then hit them in the rear. So hopefully we're prepared to do that. I'm playing on very hard, by the way, because this is one of the easier quest battles that you'll fight early on in the game. However, obviously playing it from the front end menu, you're given an army, and turning up the difficulty makes it quite challenging. So looking at Belagar Ironhammer here, he has Revenge Incarnate, which is his own unique ability. It gives him plus 58 melee attack, 36% armor piercing, but also makes him unbreakable for about 40 seconds. Now he's only got one use of that, so you know we got to use that and time that carefully. Here's some of the stats of the other units, just thought people might like to check them out before they're released. And then we've got the bolt throwers, the rangers with great weapons, the regular rangers, and uh, I'm sure we'll see a few other surprises throughout the battle. So I'm just going to stick my boys on guard mode, don't want my artillery running off without me. The same goes for my missile infantry. I'm going to leave the uh, close quarters rangers off guard mode, because they're actually obviously good at fighting, even though they have a ranged weapon. Alright, there's Belagar there, getting ready for battle. Now the battle has started, I'm running between cinematic footage uh, and let's play footage of the same battle. So it's all the same battle in the same time frame. It's just to give you a better close-up of some of the units in action, and also show you some of the gameplay at the time. So I'm, I'm getting my new bolt throwers all to focus on a wyvern that Iron Jaw Face Smasher is on. Uh, we want to be able to take him out with our anti-large units, so that's what we're using. And uh, my allies firing their artillery on from behind as they push up. So they're going to actually be chasing the greenskins up to my line for a while. As you can see, some of the bolts lodge straight in the wyvern. And some of them ping off its, uh, its scaly skin. So there was an initial attack with some uh, kind of light greenskin goblin wolf riders. And we were able to kind of just fend them off really quickly. Re-establish our lines and get ready for the brunt of the main force which is coming up to us now. So at this point, I'm basically just letting my missiles do the work for me. We've got two units of rangers and a quarrelers unit sitting at the back, firing over my men's lines, just keeping the greenskins at bay until the main brunt of the force comes to hit me. And we're reforming the lines, sticking on guard mode and making sure we keep a solid line. Uh, the rangers look incredible. They're probably my favorite looking unit, especially for Clan Angrund, because they have that kind of red trim to their cloth that you wouldn't normally get with the regular dwarves. <laughs> we get to see some of the greenskins going crazy, some of the fanatics flying past me there as they miss. Now Iron Jaw has actually landed and he's taken a good on half health from all those crossbow bolts that we fired at him. But we do have a unit of Slayers in the back that we'll have to send up as well. And you can see it's absolute chaos as we just hold the line during this battle as we wait for our ally to catch up. And you can check the radar in the top right to see how far off they are. So even though the balance of power is like quite in my favor, the enemy are of course going to have more reinforcements coming into this battle and it means nothing if they can just defeat us one by one. 
There's a huge bundle of troops on my right side that I'm just sending reinforcements to get to, and I'm also trying to take out Iron Jaw as well as much as I can. And it looks like Iron Jaw's just gone straight for Belagar, just absolutely one shot him out of it into the back. Um, but we're activating Revenge Incarnate. I thought it would be a good chance. We just want to kill the enemy, even though we don't. Re it's not really used as a last stand here. I know he's not going to break, but I thought it would be good to get that extra melee attack while we're fighting him. I'm going to maneuver my rangers um, around the sides as well to hopefully kind of get in around the back of the enemy, throw those axes in. Just as my slayers are coming up to take Iron Jaw out, he's after taking flight and circling around. If you check the map, he's coming back in for another strike on Belagar. There it is again, he just came into it again. But yeah, we've got our slayers on him. He's taken my artillery offline for a short amount of time, which isn't going to be too bad. But we should be we should have the means to deal with him. So we've got our rangers with great weapons. Look at that, the, the spinning axes that they throw. They can throw quite a good distance. Now if we check it, you can see that it is actually right within the, the limit of where I was able to throw it. So we're going to send them around the back, hopefully throw some axes into that massive bulge of troops. Uh, that's built on the right side. Meanwhile, my ally is only just now kind of reaching the back of the back of the force, and they're shooting their hand gunners into the into the different areas, or the thunderers, I should say. We're gonna get back on our artillery. It's always good, you know, after you get engaged, make sure you double-click your artillery. It'll be highlighted, and you can just reform on it. Set my slayers in against the trolls. Iron Jaw as well, I kind of missed the show, but he has actually taken flight. We didn't kill him, but he routed from the battlefield uh, as well. So that's a pretty good sign. That's what's after leading to this kind of mass route that's going on down here. This whole patch of five, six, seven units are all just gathering, grouping up together and just running for it. Meanwhile, we're throwing our axes into the big swell of enemies. No problem for the rangers. Rangers lead the way. Cool thing about the rangers are as well is they're very fast for a dwarf, which means they can kind of do that kind of quick maneuvering, get in around behind them, throw the precursor, and then engage. Uh, really fantastic unit, you know, quite quite powerful. Much better than the regular rangers. The great weapons variant is is way better. Now we've kind of pushed back the main green screen force, but they're going to have some reinforcements coming. In. You can just about see it on the radar now that they're coming in from the far end. So we'll have to check what that is. Let's just get our guns lined up and our, all, all our missiles lined up. But that's right, we've got some squig hoppers, some squig herd and some goblin wolf riders coming in. But these guys are going to mop up the allies artillery first before they can come down to me, but we're going to have to be uh, mindful of that. And they've got another unit at the back coming in, they've already hit my lines. These are the squig herd, they are kind of monstrous cavalry that have really good anti-infantry capabilities that will just come in, smash your lines and do really good damage to them when they're in there. The squig hoppers are kind of more light cav style unit. Um, so you want to watch out for the ones that don't have the riders on top. They're especially difficult to beat. So I'm just telling everybody to get off the artillery, pull back and let my main line come back and fight these guys. You gotta love their animations. They're just little balls of flesh that basically just jump around, roll into you and throw your units all around the place. And they eat them too. And we've got the organ gunners firing down at the other squigs in the distance and the goblin wolf riders where my ally holds them off and deals with them. My ally is holding off a unit of squigs by himself as well. We're actually starting to lose a few units. A few, about two or three of them are starting to rout. And a lot of my units are down on 20, 30, 20 um, kind of uh, unit count. So it was getting a little bit difficult. I was worried we were going to have a little chain route. But Belagar is on full health. He's doing awesome. So we don't have anything to worry about really. So I'm just mounting up my artillery again. Trying to get them to fire. There's just a few pockets of units left holding out. There's a couple of squig units and a couple of infantry units that we just got to surround. The ally, my ally seems to be doing okay out in the distance. Their general is still alive as well, so things are going quite good.
Yeah, it looks like he's doing just fine out there. He's, I mean, he's stretched a bit thin, but we've got our um, our artillery firing down on them, so it should be no problem at all. We've got everybody else grouping up on these last few remaining units. The squigs are actually destroying my artillery when they're charging into them like that. They're a very powerful charge to them. And sh good God, can they can they swallow a dwarf? So there's not much left to do now, it's just mop up these last couple of units and then we should be golden. Um, it did take me a while just to kind of surround them. I thought they'd break a lot quicker than I thought, so we're just finishing them off. This video makes the battle come across as being quite easy, but it did take me a few attempts in, the, in order to kind of master what to do with it. You gotta make sure you're putting your bow throwers down on Iron Jaw. You need to know when to bring the rangers in around the back. You need to have your kind of dwarf warriors leaving the front and holding their, holding their line. And uh, you need to know about the reinforcements coming in, otherwise they will catch you off guard on that first attempt. And it's just my dwarves left around victorious. Some of them have red shields and blue shields. I, I really love this different color scheme for the dwarves. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, my ally marching around successfully as well. Belagar took, like, absolutely no damage. I don't really think I put him in the fight too much. But, um, my god, yeah, he barely took any damage at all. He's done really well for himself. He's just sitting on top of a, a, a pile of bodies as well. Proudly banging his shield. Alright, so yeah, that's going to be it for the battle. It was still a Pyrrhic victory. If you look at the stats, we can see that I lost just about, like, half my force. And my ally lost over half of their force as well. And we, we did well to take out Iron Jaw early on. And uh, you can see just the sheer amount of enemies that come at you in this battle. So we've got a total of about 1,000, about 2,100, and they've got about 3,000. Um, but yeah, I think it's quite an enjoyable battle. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe for more gameplay coming soon from the King of the Warlord DLC for Total War Warhammer. As well as that, follow us on twitch.tv slash totalwarofficial for exclusive streams. And follow us on social media for all the latest announcements, competitions, and updates.